to Wild Moose. I'm Nicole. And I'm Amy. And we are bringing you a real, raw and raucous podcast. An unfiltered truth behind running a business and running a family. Dive in. Are we going to get your wiggles out? Do you know what? I played that to the kids. They absolutely love it. It's song on earth. Come then. No. Shake, shake, shake your wiggle. What is it? I don't know. You gotta shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. No? Oh, it's the boob shake. I love it. What? The boob shake. I can't do it. Your boobs like proper jiggle, well, don't they? Oh, there we go. Well, don't jiggle. My arse jiggles, but not my tits. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can only jiggle my bottom half. How can you not do I can't, this? I can't do it like you. Yours are like la 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 la. <laughs> milk. That's why. <laughs> They're really like sloshy. <laughs> Milkshake, anyone? <laughs> Can you believe we are recording episode five? No. Can you believe we've had people listening to us? No. <laughs> no. No, I can't. Still now. We were really just saying, can't. weren't we? We were like messing around with the microphone and we we're fannying around with the game on this like one microphone that we've got. <laughs> budget. Trying to make it really totally budget and trying to make it sound as good as possible. <laughs> And we were like, can you imagine one day we might actually have a studio and people doing this for us and we're going to go, do you remember the time when we were fanning around with a gain on a microphone? And we're sipping on Prosecco and having the greatest time of our lives. And just people like flitting around us. I can actually see it though. That's more of a worry for me that it feels so tangible. And this, like Wild Moose, feels like, for me, like Wild Bird was in the start. And I think that's why I love it so much because it's like, we know that this is great. (laughs) And we don't know what's going to happen with it. Like, how exciting is that? It is. It is mega, mega exciting. And I suppose it kind of leads us on to what we're talking about today, which is the mother of all mothers. The motherfucking universe. Yeah. Which sounds a little bit like... Woo-woo. Yeah, it does a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. And there was a lot of noise about the universe and, like manifesting and all that shit isn't there there is isn't there everywhere you look i mean i'm on tiktok so that's probably why i'm being fed the same shit from different people <laughs> but you see it on tiktok a lot which is my favorite social media platform oh big declaration i didn't know yeah, that yeah it is i love it i love tiktok how addicted to it are you though? i'm not i don't look at it that often because i fall into a hole and mm-hmm. i'll end up being so consumed with it mm. i just love that it's people showing up as their raw authentic yeah. self i mean really really raw <laughs> <laughs> because it's so it's so transactional what do you mean it's just make a clip send it post it there's no fanning it. around it's yeah. not about this perfection yeah. or this look at me and the people that do that don't actually do well on on tiktok because it's inauthentic it's yeah, yeah and the, i know it's a, we say it's a younger crowd but actually everybody's on it viewing it it's just the people posting on it and oh, necessarily a, a little bit younger yeah but then we're seeing all the businesses coming in and you can see the inauthentic ones that yeah. post shit i mean i done a video cleaning my wax pot and shit. i've had a million views on it <laughs> I think on businesses that are doing well, I'm not sure if they still are, but Ryanair absolutely smashed their TikTok really? strategy. Yeah. What have they done? Uh, I don't follow Ryan Scare on uh, TikTok. <laughs> Ryan Scare? <laughs> yeah, that's the nickname for him, isn't it? I didn't know that. Ryan Scare. You what? shit yourself every time you fly on him. <laughs> I've been on some. Well, maybe we'll do an episode on flights. I've yeah, Ryan Scare. One. Easy no. shit. <laughs> No. What's that other one that's come out well, now? I don't like... think we should say this. Imagine What's if they the... sponsor a podcast in the future. We are and scary. We're not going to be sponsoring us. I don't want them sponsoring us. Oh, drop give the me, mic. Give me British Airways and old Richard Branson. Big, oh, yeah. You fucking got Emirates? Oh, yeah. Oh, Pontus? Yeah. <laughs> give it to me. Oh, no, don't bang the table. I'm so sorry. What's that other, what is that other one? Wiz Air. Yeah, Wiz Air. Jizz Air. Jizz Air. Yeah. I do know that one. <laughs> Been on that. Been on that bus. Thank you. I mean, they do they do what they say on the tin. What, fly so, people in the sky? Yeah, but like, it is budget. <laughs> budget, budget, budget. Yes, but they've defined they have their place. target audience and they've yeah. gone, we're fucking going for them. Here she is, marketing queen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they have defined their, their audience. <laughs> they have, haven't they? And they do it brilliantly. They yeah, can't they say do. anything about it. Anyway. 
check them out on TikTok. Let's see that. I mean, this info is probably absolutely useless. Maybe update. <laughs> We might have to edit it out. I'll have a check after this episode. Should we go back to the universe yet? The motherfucking motherfucking I don't really know how we talk about this without sounding like crazy motherfuckers, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, it, is, it can be a bit woo-woo. And I get it, like the whole manifesting, journals, all of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm a massive believer of just putting your thoughts out there in the world. And I have got that post that says, just ask a fucking question. Mm. Because I think what your words are, your actions, aren't they? Yeah. So what you say you want, what you say you're going to do, you commit to, it's going to happen. Because you're going to make it happen, but you are putting it out there. So I've got a couple of thoughts on this. One, your subconscious does not know the difference between a truth and a lie. Mm -hmm. Fact. So the way that you talk to yourself has a direct impact on how you perform and what you do. Coming from... I am everyone else's cheerleader apart from my own. I have a very, very negative view and negative thoughts. Very negative thoughts. How do you deal with that? I don't know if I can know. Talk about negative thoughts. Oh, you can't. I tell the imposter. If I go through something difficult, Mm -hmm. if I'm going through a challenging life period, whatever that may be, personal life, family, business, Mm. I will, like, pick the scab. And picking the scab for me is, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you don't deserve this, you're never going to be able to grow wild bird. Well, It's like my go-to harmful behaviour. And then how do you change that then? Uh, Because you've kind of got to trick yourself. You do. Like the mind trickery. Yes, you do. It's noticing when it's happening for Mm. me and using the self-hypnosis that I yeah. spoke about on whatever episode that was. Yeah. Um, so going to my happy place, going into my control room and turning up or down the dials that are impacting me and mm. impacting my behaviour. So that's my one one thought. My second thought is the universe piece, the mother of all mothers, I probably didn't really think that much about when I was corporate side. Mm. But... Now, as a business owner, it's so important Mm. because if I'm not, and you only learn, I think you only learn that with the experience and the hindsight. Mm. If I'm not ready for something, my God, does the universe tell me? It's weird, isn't it? Because it's like square peg round hole. It doesn't matter how much you want something, how many post-it notes you have, what you have on your vision board. If you don't feel it in your core, it ain't going to happen. It's not meant to be, and it's not meant to be yet. Yeah. But isn't it funny? Like I don't. I'm so impatient. Yes. I want everything yesterday. Yeah. I want it all super speedy. And if it hasn't happened in a year, I'm absolutely failing. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've realised now, ten years. Moo is is ten years old today. <gasps> yeah. Today. Yeah. So Moo is Farnham opened ten years. Today, You're joking. Thirteenth December. That's massive. I know, right? Happy anniversary. Thanks. Thanks. So this was our launch day. A have have you only just realised that today? No, I, I actually thought about it two days ago and said to my team, we really should do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the busiest time of year. Yeah, but it's can't. the busiest time. And they're like, oh, yeah, someone's got to go to the shop, but we are absolutely rammed. I don't know when that's going to happen. I was like, oh, well, you yeah, know, try and get some balloons in, some cake and whatever. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, it's crazy. What an achievement. Yeah, so... Ten years. Ten years old. And I think at that time, I didn't see what's happening now. I knew I had something, but I didn't see it would, as big as this now. Yeah. I expected a couple of salons. Yeah. I wanted 10, but I was like, in my heart and my head, I was like, I don't think I'll get to 10. I don't know. We'll just start with one and see how it goes. Mm. And then it's that you get that excitement. You feel it in your core. You can see that bigger vision. And when mm-hmm. you get there, you're like, oh, actually, I, I've done that. Mm. What's next? Yeah. We were talking about this yesterday, weren't we? Yeah, because I am getting franchise inquiries thrown at me left, right and centre at the minute. (laughs) And it's so much so, this is a really hard thing to admit, but so much so, I'm like, I can only take on three, maybe four more next year because I don't have the infrastructure to take on any more and I don't, not yet. Yeah. And I don't want to grow, that's what we talked about before with investment, I don't want to get to that point where... I'm growing so quick that I'm not delivering the the service or delivering yeah. what I've promised. Yeah. And I want to be there for the launches. And if we get too big too quick, I'm not going to be able to do all of that. Yeah, so it's do, it's growing in a way that doesn't compromise your values. No. And that's important. But I had two franchise conversations in one day the other day. 
this is mental. And this is where the universe steps in. Right. So tell me more. <laughs> well, I had a lady call me the other day and we send out emails about franchise to our mailing list for mm-hmm. movies, but we've also got another franchise lead mailing list. Yeah. We send the same emails to them. And um, I think we sent one, it, it was called, Are You Still Mulling It Over? And it had like mulled wine, excuse the pun and all of that. <laughs> and we have really worked hard on our mailing list because I don't want anyone to feel super sold to, but I want them to know what's available and I yep. want them to know what the options are. And it's always got a link to a blog and it's always got a link to the website and there's always a call to action if they're interested. Yeah. But we're talking to their clients as clients. Yeah. And anyway, this lady got in touch with me the same day, I think it was, that we sent the email out. And she said, have you got time for a chat? I was like, yeah, sure, book it in for, I think it was Monday, I can't remember. And uh, as soon as I saw her on Google Meet, I was like, I know you, I've met you before, I've spoken to you before. And she told me about her job. And there's not many people that do the job that she does. And I was like, I know I've met you before. I know we've had this conversation because I'm just as excited by you now as what I was the first time I had that same feeling. Because she oozes everything I love about women. Like, she's got an incredible job, incredible career. Mm -hmm. She wants something for herself, like this side hustle to show her kids that you can do it all. Like, I just, oh, I've got a bit of a crush on her. I'm not going to lie. She's amazing. And um, I told Martin about her. And he goes, I remember you telling me about this woman. Ten years ago, or whenever it was. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. She really made an impact on me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was talking to her about franchise, and she goes, you know, I never look at my emails. I've never seen anything from you before. I never look at anything. It goes to that account, you know, that everyone has their emails to go to. Yeah. And she said, it just so happened that it arrived to my account sometime when I was looking at my phone, Mm -hmm. and it popped up, and I read it and went, what a great opportunity. I might have a chat about this. She's not looked at my website She's not looked at anything, but she's a client of ours. I've got several things here. <laughs> like, my marketing brain is telling me, can you share when you sent that email? Because I, I know that much. You sent uh, it Friday. At, so you sent it at a time where everyone tells you not to send emails. Yeah, so, right? yeah, you always... So we've been testing loads of different times of when to send emails. And everyone tells you, like, do it 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. Or 3 or 4, I think it is, in yeah. the afternoon. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. And we were like, let's see what happens on a Friday. This is just one of those random emails. We're talking about franchise a lot. Let's just send it on a Friday. I think it was like, we, it was actually Yasmin that works for me said, I want to test it because so many people work at home on a Friday afternoon. And it's like that lull time, isn't it? Yeah. I think she sent it at like four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, which is like the absolute no-no. Yeah. And we had one of the highest open rates we've ever had. Number one. Brilliant. Random, isn't it? Random, but Brilliant. And my second marketing hat thought is you graft so hard at a journey for Mm. your target audience on franchise, really, really important to the franchise arm of the business. And she has come to you seemingly out of nowhere. Completely out of nowhere. Didn't even know we were franchising. And yeah, she goes in, she's not someone that goes in, has her nails all waxing done like every month. She yeah. just goes in a couple of times a year, I think. So she's like out of it, out of the, the Mooey's fold as such. It's not yeah. like she's got managers or therapists talking to her about this. And this is what we're talking about, the mother of all Universe. mothers. Universe, right? like where did this woman come from? One, yeah. I remember her. Yeah. And anyway, we had our chat and she was like, I said, have you thought about a location? Yeah. And so the difficulty we've got, because a lot of our franchise inquiries come from our clients, which I love because it means they know the brand and they know what service that they should be giving, yep. you know, the problem we've got is there's not that many towns. We've kind of already got the monopoly. Yeah. You know, I feel like one day we'll have a Moore's Monopoly board, which I'm well excited about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who owns Monopoly? Is it Hasbro? We can make that happen. I really want a Moore's Monopoly. I think that's a great idea. Because we've kind of monopolised that area. So down the A3 or the towns in Surrey, in the area that we're in, there's a lot of towns that we can't really go into. They're either not big enough or they're not suitable. So the areas that are suitable are the ones we've already got. So for anybody within that sort of 30 to 40 minute drive radius, we've kind of done it. Mm -hmm. So now we have to be a bit more creative and kind of think outside of the box. But the other day, I was driving back from our Christmas party with Yaz 
And there was loads of traffic on the M25. Sat nav gave us a bit of a detour and took us through Sunningdale. Mm-hmm. And I'd never been through it before. I've been through Ascot loads, but Sunningdale, and I was like, me and Yaz both looked at each other and went, a Mooers belongs here. Yeah. Like, this place needs a Mooers. It is beautiful. It is exactly where Mooers belongs. Mm-hmm. Didn't really think much of it. Anyway, got talking to this prospective franchise mm-hmm. And she was telling me what her husband does as well. And she said, oh, he's a handyman. I was like, oh, wow. And she said, I am an avid project manager. I'm really good at managing people and I will manage a project within a penny, you know? Mm-hmm. And she said, but he's he's a handyman, but he also does shop fit outs and stuff. And I was like, and she goes, I know, right? Isn't that a great combination? Yeah. I said, it is an incredible combination. And, I, and then she, I said, have you thought about where you're going to go or where you would go? And she said, well, I don't know, really. I was going to ask you. We talked about a few places. I said, you know what? I was driving through Sunningdale the other day. And she looked at me and she went, "What? this is so weird. My husband's doing a shop fit out in Sunningdale right now. And he phoned me yesterday and said, this place is amazing. Someone needs to have a business here. And she said, and he said to me how amazing this is. She goes, I've also got some really good friends in Sunningdale. And I said, it's always good if you can set up a business where you've got contacts, especially people that love you because they will help you. Yeah. And she was like, this is really spooky. So this is big, fat stars aligning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then after our conversation, I got all the warm and fuzzy feels. You know, I know straight away if I meet someone, I'm not going to take on a franchisee if we don't connect because I'm going to be working. We're going to be in bed with each other for like the next five to 10 years. Yeah. We have to get on. Mm -hmm. We have to be respectful of each other. But also I have to know that they're going to do the best they can with my brand. Yeah. It's a lot of trust. There's a lot of trust. And they have to trust me as well. Mm -hmm. And like me. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I kind of, I got those feels afterwards going, this could work. I'm really excited about this person. I think she's going to do great things. And she was talking about her daughter and like how her daughter loves nails and lashes and hair and skincare. And she she said, I just, I would love to have somewhere that my daughter could work in the future if she wanted. She goes, but I also want my kids to see that you don't just need one income. You should have multiple streams of income. So you should focus on your, your education and a career. Yeah. And your skill, mm-hmm. but you can also have something else that is another stream of income that, mm. and you can rely on either. Brilliant. What a great lesson for kids. Yeah. So, yeah, I put the phone down and automatically went straight in, found her in our booking system. I'd done her first three appointments back in 2015. <laughs> I knew that I'd met her and yeah, yeah, yeah. had these conversations with her, but how random is that? And that's what we mean right on the universe serving you up things yeah that you are ready for and it feels weird it feels weird because there's so many coincidences coincidences, coincidences. <laughs> <laughs> that you can't ignore yeah and for me it's like that feeling when you need to check in on a friend because you just get a feeling that they're not okay yeah mm. and it's that sits in the same sort of energy as the universe serving you up something that you are totally mm. ready for And, do you know, I completely wholeheartedly agree because up until, well, I've been, I've been talking about how many franchises I want or how big I want this brand to be, but there's always been that thing in me, like, I'm just not ready yet. or I just can't do it yet because I've got to get this sorted. I'm a big believer in when the time's right. Yeah. And I have forced it in the past Mm -hmm. and made things happen that aren't quite ready and I've got very frustrated with time frames and that I have this vision, I want this to happen, and it's not happening. But then when it does, you're like, oh, now I'm actually ready. Yeah. And I am fully ready and open. I can deal with this. These yeah. inquiries that are coming in, they are the right people mm-hmm. that I want to work with. I'm excited about the locations that they're choosing. They're the right locations where my brand needs to go. And I can manage it. Mm. My biggest concern is that I'm going to have too many and that they're going to have to hold off until I've finished the first three. I mean, what a great problem to have, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you're, I just, yeah, I think it's bloody wonderful. Thanks. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm super stoked about it. Super excited. But now, like, I've freed up so much time with different jobs that I've done. Mm-hmm. So I've kind of allowed those stars to align by knowing what needs to happen yeah for that to be brought to me to free up your space yeah, yeah. and it has what you you used an analogy the other day about a box oh i was talking about clearing the space mm. for the universe to give you stuff yeah 
which is, is is exactly that. It's knowing that something is going to come your way and being ready for it and trusting in it. Mm. I've also forced things when yeah. I should not have within Wild Bird. And fuck me, have I learned the hard lessons off the back of that. But you can't tell anyone else that. It's like when I was having um, Eddie for the first time and people were saying, you can't work and have a, you can't work and have a baby. And I thought, F- fuck you. <laughs> I fucking well will. Mm. Um, people have got to learn those lessons on their own. But, oh, God, there's, the, again, a couple of things going on in my brain. One, trusting in the universe, but also having a plan. Mm. You can't just say, I want to have ten franchises, put it on a video And then board. not do anything about it. Yeah, you've yeah. got to have the steps to be able to do that. But it's also trusting in it will happen when it's right. Mm. So, yeah, a few bits of, of those. Yeah, we have hopes in how long she's been in nursery now? Four? A month? Yeah. And I had a coaching session yesterday with my uh, mentor, my business mentor, who has been with me from the start, even before Wild Bird set up, was set up, actually, while I was still at ITV. Do you budget for her? Is that just been, like, yeah. ever since you started, yeah. you've just budgeted for her input? Absolutely, wow. yeah. Mm. She is integral to the business. She's integral to me. And the business. Mm. And she knows it so well now as well. Mm. And is that uh, never in the time that we've worked together have I ever said, I've had this idea and she's gone, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> she's there, backing me up every single time. Yeah. And I think that as a role within your business is so important, mm. whatever it looks like, even if it's a mate. Yeah because you don't have the budget to, to plan for that initially at the, at the early stages. So we were talking. I had a session with her before Hope started nursery, mm-hmm. and it was, you realise you need to take a pause, right? And I'm going, no, 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 no. We need to fucking get this fucking shit on the road. <laughs> you need to make some money to pay for the nursery, Come right? Come the fuck on, Bridget. <laughs> I can't. And she's going, no, no, you need a pause, because... Hope's six months old. Mm. It's a lot, right? Mm. Having a baby. There's a lot of thought like... And then you've got to switch your brain from... Right, it's not all on me for her. It is now we can do a bit of this, we can do a bit of that. I'm actually getting some dedicated time to work on stuff. But someone telling you that you need to pause and you need to give this space when you've got the pressure to make money to pay for the nursery Mm -hmm. is really, really hard. Mm. But for me, money's not a motivator. It really isn't. So, And it doesn't sing to my values. Mm. Which if you were to say to me, you need to make X amount of money, I'd go, yeah, that's not. Mm. Financial freedom, yes, but that's only to unlock family experiences for mm. us so I can fulfill that soul joy value yeah. that sits at the top of my my individual values. Anyway, what the fuck am I talking about? So, you need a pause. Fast forward a month later and I'm updating Liz, my mentor on right, this is what's happened in the last month. I've got this opportunity, I've got that opportunity. I'm speaking to this person. If this comes off, my fucking god, if all the things come off, holy shit. Yeah. And she said, I asked you last month about pausing. Now this month, a mere four weeks later, I'm asking you, are you ready for this, <laughs> Nicole? And I'm going, yeah, I'm really fucking overwhelmed, but I am ready. Yeah. That for me sits in this, the mother all mothers. And the thing is, you've opened up this time. Yeah. And all these opportunities have come flooding in. And yeah. you've, when we spoke yesterday, you were like... This is actually happening, isn't it? This is actually happening. Now, you've been in hustle mode for so long, firefighting mode for so long, which is really common in the beginning of a business. Then all of a sudden, you've got the time. Yeah. The opportunities are coming your way. You might be in a position you'd be able to choose. Yeah. But you're talking five years. That's five years. But it's not, as we discussed yesterday, well, it'll be five years in January. As we discussed yesterday, it's not actually five years. It's five years and two kids mm. and a pandemic. Yeah. It's not really a normal It's not pattern. really a normal five years, <laughs> no. no, of hustling. No, but... But as soon as you've got that extra time, those opportunities have just come in. And yes, you've done the legwork. Yes, you've done it. And it does feel like you're wading through mud constantly, right. doesn't it? When you're in that setup and startup mode, yeah. it feels like you're constantly like, is this working? But if it feels right in your gut, yeah. 
just keep pushing. Yeah. If I can't. It's, yeah. If it's not feeling right, don't wade. No. You've got to be able to... So, But it's so easy to say that now on the other yeah. side, isn't it? Because at the time, you've got multiple levers that you, you need or you, you're having to pull for whatever reason. Mm. So it's hard to know when to push and when not to and yeah. when to say no. Really, really hard. And there's yeah. elements of you've got to fuck up as well yeah. and allow yourself the space to fuck up. And be okay with that. Yeah, to learn from it, to fail hard, to fail fast, and to move on quickly. Yeah. And there will be so many of those. There will be so many of those times, but you just have to take stock and go, am I on the right path? Does this feel good? Yeah. Does this align with my values? And if it is, just keep going yeah. and then let that path clear ahead of you naturally, yeah. which is, I feel, where you kind of have to have a bit of faith, don't you? You have to trust that whatever it is you believe in, it might not be the universe, it might be a religion, it might be whatever it is, you have to give yourself space to just free up that, yeah. you know, control yeah. and say, if this is right, it will happen and yeah. have that faith and belief. That, um, I, I'm totally, yeah, totally with you on that. For a control freak, someone mm. saying to me, you need to pause. Mm. No. But then by doing that, that's what's look what's come your yeah. way. And now it's what more opportunities than you've had in five years, all in a month. Yes. Okay. And I got upset on the call yesterday because there's an element of, I can't, this is it. This is, it's actually working. Mm-hmm. And Liz's point was, you, we probably say this once every three or four months. You go, no, 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 something like this has never happened before. <laughs> Posta. <laughs> we did, did we think of a name for her? Yeah, we did. I'm not sure if we can say it on it. Moni. Moni, Moni Myrtle. Yeah, but it was worse than that. I mean, let's stick with Moni Myrtle. Yeah, she is. Because she is. She's just like the character in Harry Potter. Yeah. Mm. Or the other thing that I thought, I don't know if this sits nicely with um, the mother of all mothers, but it's probably quite good. And what we're talking about now is intuition and knowing mm-hmm. yourself yeah. and knowing in your core when you're onto something and when you're not. My wonderful sister-in-law used to be a teacher and has now set up her own tutorial business that's going epically yeah. well. I bet. And when we spoke well, probably six months ago now, she said that she didn't realise how much work on yourself you have to do when you set up your own business. Mm. And this is someone going from public services to to running on their own. Mm. And I also, being surrounded by people that are in public services, professionally and also family side... You don't realise the difference. I didn't realise because I'm not in it, but the difference in language and the difference in ways of working. Hmm. So we talk about onboarding. We talk. I don't know if I've had this conversation no. with you. Right. We talk about onboarding. We talk about induction. We talk. We have a corporate language, right? That public services do not use at all. Really. I'm not just talking about specific public services. I'm talking across the board. Yeah. Not at all. Wow. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. So she's done taken this leap and gone from public services to working for herself. She said, I just didn't realise like my mindset, the impact that my mindset has on how I develop the business and how much you get in your own way. Yeah. Because it's so far removed on this side of public services. So what has she had to work on the most then? Because... Obviously, you're really close to it. For her, we put, we should probably get her on. I think it would, she'd probably say mindset. Mm. But then what do you mean by that? Well, like what I was talking about, how I talk to myself. Yeah. Right, I can give you a live example of this. Yes. So, I went to a meeting the other day. It was a very, it was a great meeting. It was a strategic meeting. We were getting on really well. It was with two business owners of the same... Or two directors of the same business. Husband and wife. The husband I'd already had a discovery call with. He knows my backstory, knows my credentials. Mm -hmm. We'd had a really, really good chat. The wife didn't know. But we were talking about how we move the business forward, what we do, what the foundation is, and how marketing plays a role in that. 
it was, a, like I say, great session. During this session, I had two missed phone calls from the nursery. A missed call from my husband. I had no signal because I was in Woburn, mm -hmm. which is terrible for signal. And I had three voicemails. Right. So, yeah. so Yeah, fuck, fuck, fuck. <clears throat> so sorry, you need to take these. Blah, blah, blah. Hello, Hope's got a temperature. We think it's teething. Are you happy for us to give for her to give for us to give cowpaw? Yes, fine. Put the phone down. If their response, if you need to go, that's fine. Family comes first. They were wonderful, oh, which is incredible. Brilliant. No, no, no. This is important. I will stay. My husband's at home. I know that will be fine. Another call. Her temperature spiked. She's at thirty eight point eight. You need to come and get her. I've got the car and the pram. It was a fucking clusterfuck. <laughs> Matt's sorting that out fine. He went to pick her up, lovely. So has he got a car as well? No, we've buy... only got one car. So he walked. Oh. It's not far, but he walked. Just, what, right. half hour there, half hour back? <sighs> There's the baby born carrier yeah. was at the nursery. And then I got another call. This is all relevant. Another call from the nursery to say that Eddie had fallen over and banged his head and he had got a fat lip. <laughs> So this is all whilst trying to deliver a really impactful strategic <laughs> workshop where we're focusing and my mum brain is going, fuck, 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 I you need to fucking... get to my babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it is that. I feel torn. Yeah. It's also taking my mind away from what I should be. Yeah. So it takes a lot of discipline, I guess, to bring yourself back to try and deliver what I was trying to do. So what did Moaning Myrtle say to you in that? Oh, moaning time. She's fucking all over me at this point. Moaning, my, I became Moaning Myrtle, I'd right. probably say. So we're talking about all this. We're having a great session. I'm lent for, I'm engaged in the chat that we're having. And then the wife says, can I just ask you about you and your experience and what you've done? Mm -hmm. And Moaning Myrtle goes, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to see straight through you, isn't she? And she did. Oh, wow. Because I leaked big time. Well, literally leaked or leaked. Like... <laughs> <laughs> leaked Moaning Myrtle. Right, okay. I sat back in my chair. I talked a lot quieter. Yeah. I didn't have any confidence. You, you could see the confidence Since melt having away. to deal with the whole kid situation. The kid situation, being asked that question. I just... Moaning Myrtle fully leaked out of me. Wow. So much so that she said, why is it when we talk about the marketing of this, you are fully engaged, you're confident, you're on it. If I ask you about you, you sit back in your chair. Oh, my God. That must have been really tough. It was fine. We were having a really honest, open, okay. transparent convo. So it wasn't, it, that wasn't misplaced, what, right. she, what she said. She was accurate. And what, really what accurate. did you say? What did you do? What did I say? It's probably because I've had about five phone calls from the nursery and I... A bit dishevelled. Yeah, well, you mm. think about the cloak of armour or the guard that, or, like, the front that you put up. Yeah. It's like when you put on a certain outfit, isn't it, to go to a meeting. Yeah. You know that that makes you feel a bit powerful. I always put a red lippy on if I've yeah. got a big meeting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or stand, like, in the superhero pose. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. then that had all come off from you because you were in mum mode. Yeah, and I was try desperately trying to balance the two, mm. and it leaked. It really oh. leaked. But it just so happened that sharing that vulnerability in that environment was okay. Mm. It's not always going to be okay. Mm. So mindset for me is is huge because if I don't sort moaning Myrtle out, that's going to impact how I get people into Wildbird. Of course it is. Because they need to see that they can have faith in you. Same as me with franchising. They need to know they have faith. And you said to me the other day, we should do something about that fear of failure or getting it wrong, didn't you? Was it something like that? And what did you say to me? You probably don't get that feeling, do oh, you? It is a uh, crisis of confidence. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you were like, I bet you don't get that. And I said, oh, my God, I get it so much. I just check myself as quick as I can. Yeah. But my problem is I over-deliver because I'm so worried about overselling and under-delivering. That's yeah. my biggest fear. Yeah. 
I never, ever want people to be disappointed. That's why I'm so authentic on socials, because I, I never want people to meet me and be disappointed. Yeah. I want yeah. them to go, oh, my God, you're exactly the same. Yes, yeah. Which you are, but I think we're probably quite aligned in your franchise because we're selling ourselves. Yeah. That, for me, is probably one of the most vulnerable yeah. places to be. And if you, if my mindset, my moaning myrtle's not in check... Yeah. Yeah, me too. I have to be in the right frame of mind. Because also, I had a conversation the other day, and it always throws me off kill. I I thought I was speaking to a woman, yeah, and then within 10 minutes, not even 10, she put me on loudspeaker with her husband, and then end up having most of the conversation with her husband, and it always throws me off. Yeah. Not because I'm intimidated, or I suppose it's just not what I'd prepared for. Yeah. And I've had it before, I've gone to someone's house and I've ended up having the meeting with a husband who's like an ex-CFO of a massive company and I'm like, ah, it's just me, just little old me, like, Marie's, <laughs> you know. You know little old me, but that, might, but that mindset, even then. I have to really check yeah. that. I yeah. really have to check that. And didn't we have something on um, socials? We did. We asked questions this week on socials about anything that you want to ask us, please submit and we will answer them. Yeah, didn't we have one about someone setting up their own business? And it was to do with fear. What's your mantra? What's your mantra? Yeah, so I'm about to set up my own business. I am worried, fear of failure. Do you have a mantra that you use? (laughs) Is yours come the fuck on, Bridget? Mine mine is actually, what could go wrong? My biggest fear is not living my life to my absolute maximum. Right, right. So if I get to that point where I feel like I'm nervous or worried, I will push through because I know that's where the prize is. Yeah. You know, when you, you know, when you're, when you're at that point of fear, Mm -hmm. if you can just push through that, you know that that's when the growth is, you know, that's where the success is, you know, where that's all the good shit is. Yeah. And I would, I always think about being on my deathbed. (laughs) And I always think like, what would I regret? I'm never going to be on my deathbed going, I'm really pleased I played it safe. You're mm. never going to do that, are you? No. I'm really pleased that I chose to think of other people before myself. Yeah. There's certain things that I would regret mm-hmm. or that I want to change, That like people that I don't spend enough time with, people that I really care about that and I, I don't make time for and I really want to change that. But my mantra is, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. I think that's a really, really good shout. Because the worst thing that could happen is I leave my business. And I've already nearly been there once. And I've nearly... There's been two or three occasions where I've been really close to closing it because it's been so stressful and I just didn't think I had it in me to make it work. Yes. And I was like, I just don't know if I want to do this anymore. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I want to. (gasps) That was so tough because it was like, it was like, do I just admit defeat? Can we talk about this for a minute? Yeah. Please, because I have a theory. Yeah. And I think you have the same theory. When it is that hard and that horrific, you are absolutely on the edge of greatness. Really? I think, yeah. And I... I I actually have never thought of it like that. My analogy would be in the throes of labour, in that point where Mm. you go, oh my God, I cannot do this anymore! I'm not oh getting them out. The picture of our microphone. I was going to so save the game. The game. I've got to turn the game down. I can't do this anymore. I yeah. am in pain. Yeah. It's been days, 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 days. Mm. There is no way that this fucking thing is ever coming out of me ever, ever. I've shut myself more times than I care to imagine. <laughs> no, just me. Right, great. Um, <laughs> Didn't Matt Billum have to scoop it out? Matt Billum did have to scoop. It out. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Sorry, <laughs> I mean, doesn't everybody shit themselves alone? No, her? no, I know many people that. I didn't. I thought I did, but home. Martin and the nurse told me I didn't. I still think they were just being nice to me. I, d- I saw that. So, the, <laughs> just, just to digress into the water birth in our own home of our beautiful daughter Hope, the, my wonderful midwife Leanne. Leanne, if you're listening, you are absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. You actually got me through all of that. I had a little ritual, which was the shit ritual. <laughs> so, <laughs> Leanne would go, Matt. We've got another one. And I thought that I couldn't, and like, because like, you're in the zone, right? You can't they talk, were... you can't. I'm sucking on gas and air, and Matt will go, all right, cheers, Leanne. Get a little uh, sip and just scoop out the shit, my shit. 
and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Good, ready to go again, yeah, guys. Yeah. This so, is brilliant. Anyway, so you're right in it. You're, you're in labour. <laughs> you're in the throes of labour, and you go. I can't. And I can. Can I? Yeah, I can pick both points in both labours mm-hmm. where I where no 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 no, and I was on the edge of greatness because within ten minutes they were both born. Wow, that must be a thing. It, it must be. Thing. A, it must be a universe thing. Must be a human thing. I don't fucking know what it is, but it's a definitely a thing. I looked at Leanne and said, I can't, there's no can't way, she's not coming, we're going to have to go to hospital, we're going to have to get her out another way. And she went, right, at 11 o'clock, we're getting you out, I'm going to examine you, and then she's coming out. Wow. And she was wonder, 100% right, right. I wonder how common that is. Really that common. That would be really, we should speak to Leanne about that, because... Let's get her on. How common is that when that woman feels like that, can't go any further, and then that's when you're on the edge of greatness, that's when it's going to happen? Because I'd never, ever thought about that in business before. I'd never thought, I am ready to quit, I'm ready to fold. I can't, It's the responsibility I find overbearing and overwhelming sometimes. And sometimes you just want to shut the door to the world... When you're a leader or a director of a company, you can't do that. You've no. got people asking you and hammering you with questions all day. And there's been days and I'm like, I genuinely can't answer everything. I cannot keep on top of everything. I cannot manage this. And then I have a good night's sleep. And the next day I'm like, okay, one thing at a time, one step at a time. Let's just make some progress today. You can't look at the whole mountain. You cannot stand at the bottom of the mountain and go, Oh. Yeah, but it is that time of significant growth. Now I look look back, it is that time of significant growth. And it is because I am I have to power through because I'm learning a new skill. Yeah. On a bigger company or hiring new people. It's, it's always that time when you're taking on new people and you're teaching them everything. So you're still trying to do oh, your job. Oh, God, the reason. Still, yeah. yeah, still got your full-time parenting role. And then now you're trying to teach people within a role to do their job. And it's like oh my God, is this the right thing? Can I manage this? How can this grow if I have got people in it that don't even know what they're doing? And then give it time and then it all forms together. In the universe we trust. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And those times when I've had to dig really, really deep Mm -hmm. to have any kind of faith that I'm on the right path, Mm. I have entrusted it a lot in the big wide world of universe and mother nature or whatever it may be. Yeah. Well, there is an element of believing in your core. You have, like, crisis of confidence. You get a bit shaky. You think, mm, am I doing the right thing? Should I just go and get a job? I often think, should, should I just, just go, go and get, get a job? job? Especially when you know you could earn a lot of money doing what you're doing. Significant more. Yeah. Significantly more than, yeah. Because a lot of people do think going into business, you're going to make a shit ton of money. No. I mean, I didn't pay myself for the first six months. And then for the first two years, I paid myself a thousand pound a month. And... I was the lowest paid staff member in my entire company for the first two years. Look at you, dying, like falling on your sword. Find like that the absolute hero. <laughs> You're a fucking <laughs> ass. <laughs> but, but it's it true. It was the only way it's I true. could survive. Yeah. And at that time, because yeah. it was in growth, I couldn't... And then it was like, right, I can... Now I need to pay myself X amount to yeah. pay for extra school or childcare or whatever. Yeah. But well, you yeah. sacrifice so yeah. much. Yeah, but people do think, oh, well, I've got this skill and I get paid X amount of money in this company, so I'm going to, I'll just set up my own, I'll earn a shit ton of money. People do that in the beauty industry all the time. Yeah, the sacrifice is massive. Mm. So what have we discussed today? The mother of all mothers. Yeah. The universe, intuition. Yeah. Trusting. Uh-huh. Digging deep. Yeah. I've not got anything profound to you're looking oh, at me like I'm I've looking got at you like you've profound. got something really profound. No, to, I was going to go to into start. the high and low of the week. Oh, okay. So I hope that answered our question on social. If you are starting out and you are really worried or fear of failure or you're panicking, what's the worst that could go on? Have you got a mantra? Have you got anything you would say? No, moaning myrtle is overpowering at the minute. <laughs> All this is this is just affirming that I need to do something about moaning myrtle. Mm. Because she shouldn't have leaped like she did last week. Yeah, well, I should have, could have, would have. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not a lot you can do about it. Do I have a mantra? No, no. (laughs) So, absolutely useless. No, yours is very good. What have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? I also tell myself, if I'm presenting, I'll tell myself, no one will know if you fuck it up. Because I always worry that 
it's your content, right? Mm. More often than not, you're presenting your content. So I will plan, 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 practice. It's in my head all mm. the time, all the time. Get ready so yeah. it goes in. And then when it comes closer to the day, I think, oh, fucking hell, what if I forget that bit? What if I forget this bit? Mm-hmm. I, what, I obsess over forgetting elements of mm-hmm. whatever I need to deliver. So my mantra on that is, so fucking what? You are the only person that's going to know that you've forgotten that. Yeah. Not anyone else. Yeah, because they don't know what your script is. It's your content. You know it the best. Amazing. Mm. But then that's the beauty of being in self-employed, isn't it? And doing it your own, doing your own thing. Because you'll make your own mistakes, but it's all you. Yeah. How, how delightful. How exciting. Well excited. So, highs and lows. You got any for this week? Oh God, I've got quite a few going on. I've got a lot of highs at the minute with business. Like lots of growth, lots of things that are exciting that are happening. What else have I got? My low. Well, I don't know if it's a low or a high because it was hilarious. And this is a family one. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we took the kids to Gulliver's yeah. last weekend and we done the staying over and we stayed in the Princess Castle, which Pink is basically... Pink Palace, yeah. <laughs> Pink Palace, but it is basically a shipping container with a little bit of, st- like, the stud walls of a castle. <laughs> However, the kids absolutely loved it. The food, man, it was awful. <laughs> but the whole experience itself was so lovely. <clears throat> we done, like, the Winter Wonderland. They really undersold and over-delivered on the experience. But... Because like we didn't know there was like this winter wonderland. We didn't even know necessarily it was a. I knew there was a meat Santa, but it was like walking through this whole like workshop and winter wonderland. I just didn't. I didn't know any of that existed. I had no idea because their communication was so shocking. Like there was no explanation, and they were like, "What time's your breakfast?" We were like, "I don't know." We just said ten o'clock. We don't even know where. We didn't know it was a different location. Oh, mm. it's a joke. But anyway, food was awful. Experience great. Went up to Santa with the kids, and. Me and Martin are both not control freaks. Well, probably are. We're both balls, like balls deep. Like we are in. Like they're railroaders. Yeah, yeah. We can't railroaders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we walked in and we saw Santa, this Cockney guy. It was hilarious. And we were like, come on, then, kids, sit on his lap. Let's get a picture. And he was like, oh, we're doing it like this, are we? I was like, yeah, yeah. Carried on. And I was telling him that kids want hamsters. And isn't it right that Santa doesn't agree with pets for Christmas because, like, it's not fair on the pets and because they're animals and. Maybe you just do a cage with gift cards. Is that how you do it? And he went, oh, yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, yep, yeah, that's what we do. And he was like, <laughs> it was improv, so, improv, yeah, it was come, improv. On Santa. come on, Santa. You could see we totally, like, <laughs> ruined his entire script. We ruined everything. And then we were, like, chatting away. I went, anyway, lovely to meet you. And he was talking to us about, like, you have a different path in life. You're, obviously, he's done something in his past life and he didn't intend to be Santa. <laughs> he was talking about this, like, his whole journeys and past. And I was like, whatever. See you later. Thanks for your time we walked out got our picture yeah walked out and I looked at the screen and went oh shit look there's loads of photos there must have been a camera in there and they were doing their own professional photo, photos, professional photos. Yeah. and I went Martin there's not one photo of kids on laps and Martin looked at me and I went oh fuck oh fuck <laughs> I bet they've stopped doing that. I bet they're not allowed to put kids on Santa's lap. So not only did we go against everything, we made our eight and six-year-old sit on this dodgy guy's lap and took her own photo and boycotted the entire event. Those poor girls. Those poor girls. The poor guy. Oh. He's probably like, what the fuck? Like the, like the Tasmanian devils. We came in, run the whole event and fucked off. <laughs> Railroaded, absolutely railroaded. <laughs> so it was, it was like one of those moments. You go, oh my god, am I a bad parent? I've just made my kids sit on a stranger's lap. Like, oh my god, we're in 2023. I don't think we can do that anymore. Oh well, guys, let's go, shall we? <laughs> but me and Martin laughed about it for hours. He just kept on looking at me and bursting out laughing. <laughs> what did we do to our children? <laughs> I don't, we shouldn't be laughing about it. It's awful. Oh, it's, it was awful but funny. And, you know, it was the fact that we just bulldozed our way in and told him exactly what we wanted, what he wanted to just say, and then walked out. So, yeah, there's a bit of a high and a low. That's yeah. where I'm at. What about you? I wrote mine down, and I don't Ooh. know whether to read it. I might give it a go, and you might have to edit it afterwards. Okay. <laughs> So, we have a lovely German Shepherd. His name is Wilson. No, he's not named after Friday Night Dinner. He is named after Castaway. I have no idea about either of those. Okay. 
That's for those listeners out there. Yes. Cheers, Amy. Great. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Wilson is of an age now where he needs hydrotherapy because he's got arthritis in one of his hips. Oh, he's such a lovely dog, isn't he? He is a wonderful, wonderful boy. So Eddie and I took him for hydrotherapy mm-hmm. on Saturday. Mm-hmm. The weather was horrific on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And this is my low of the week. Right. Really grey, really wet, really sludgy with the leaves. Yeah. Not nice. So what do uh, all of us English people do? Discuss the weather. (laughs) The wonderful woman who delivers the hydrotherapy for Wilson is of a very young age. She's lovely. It's the first time that I've met her previously when I've gone. It's been someone else. So we're chatting away... For whatever reason, last week my days were filled with interruptions. So my mum is on her way over to come and see us. She's ringing me. Nicole, I've got a flat tyre. I I can't fucking help. Like, I'm in this room with the dog in the pool, trying to talk to this woman, trying to keep the toddler occupied. Other people are ringing me. Nicole, can I have this? Can I speak? Yes, everyone. Thank you. (laughs) Great. Then that kind of subsides, and I start talking to this lady. And I say, God, the weather. (laughs) Isn't it awful outside? And she goes, yeah. I'd take the frost, though, any day out of this. And I went, yeah. You know, I used to I used to feel like that when I was your age. Really fucking patronising what I came out yeah. with because the filter had gone because of all the interruptions. Completely gone. I said, I really used to feel like this is quite magical, isn't it? But now I look at it and think I could really do without falling over and having a fucking hip replacement. <laughs> Because that'd be really inconvenient in my life right now. <laughs> All right, Granny. She looked at me like I'd lost the plot, and I thought this is probably quite possibly the most tragic conversation <laughs> I've ever had in my entire so life. So you thought you'd share that with us? Yeah, welcome. This. So you share your tragic conversation with yeah, us? Yeah, I mean it's a low of the week. The it fact that my life is now, I feel like I'm on a constant, constant hazard perception risk assessment. Why? Vibe. Because he's a toddler, right? I'm constantly thinking, don't do that, be careful, please right. watch this. Not please because watch of your that. hip, sorry. No, I thought no, you were yeah, worried then, about your hip. Yeah, but then I'm thinking, oh, if I fucking fall over and break my leg right now, that'd be really shit. Like, how annoying <laughs> would that be? No, I've lost you. You haven't lost me, mate, but that moaning myrtle is fully in. That's not even the imposter, that's just the whinge. The whinge? Yeah. Oh, give us a good thing. Come on, let's put a positive spin. What's happened that's been really good this week? Oh, lots of wonderful opportunities within Wildbird mm. that are exciting and different. And we had a really magical conversation yesterday. Oh, yeah. We did, yeah. Because we declared our undying love for each other a little bit, didn't we? We did, yeah. And I was saying, I think, but people come into your life, don't they? People come into, in and out of your life for a reason. I'm a massive believer of that, and it all falls in sync with what we're talking about. However, we were kind of introduced at NatWest, then we had a few dog walks, and then we kind of didn't see each other for a while. And then we kind of reached... I, re, I One of us reached out. We're like, let's go for another dog walk. And then all of a sudden, it's like it's clicked. Yeah. But I genuinely feel, since that I've had you in my life a lot... Yeah. Because we're now in the point where we're speaking nearly every day. Yes, yeah. I feel like I have, at the same time as I'm dealing with, I'm going through counselling with my husband, there's a lot of stuff that's lifting. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, big, deep feelings that I haven't shared or a lot of difficult situations that I haven't really talked about. And I feel like in both scenarios, I am, like, a lot brighter and a lot more lifted, you know? And we talk about business so much, but also you not only just a cheerleader, you hear me and you give feedback and you give advice and I do the same for you. It doesn't feel like I'm on my own anymore. Yeah. And it's really lifted everything. Yeah. You make me. It's it's the second time you said that and it's just as hard for me to hear the second time because it's lovely. Yeah. So thank you. It's okay. But also you're making me level up as well. Really? And that's what it feels like. It oh, feels like exciting. leveling up. It 100% feels like Because it is all up. about who you, your frequency, isn't it? And yeah. who you're around. Yeah. But because of you leveling up, it's opening up opportunities for you. Yeah. But for me, I feel lighter. Yeah. And it's the only way I can explain it. I feel like my relationship with my husband is becoming better and better. And we're investing a lot of time and money into that because we want it to work and be the best it can be. Yeah. But this relationship with us brings me so much joy. Yeah. 
that I feel that that's because I'm lighter. I'm attracting more people into my life. Yeah. I'm having conversations with people that I probably wouldn't have even met. There's people just coming at me. Like, yeah. Just it's the universe. It really is. Mm. I feel like I'm in a position where I can either help, help and serve others. Yeah. I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable doing that now. Mm -hmm. I can make time for other people. But I can also enjoy it and have all the opportunities come to me as well. And I'm in that right zone of genius to yeah. make it all happen. Uh, yeah, it does feel like that, the genius zone. Also, Wild Moose is filling up my love cup yeah. beyond belief. We had, we should probably share this, we had our first DM. Oh, yes, we did. That yeah. was so beautiful, wasn't Nessa, it? Nessa, you are amazing. Yeah. Someone reached out and messaged us. I was shaking with excitement. Mm. Like, I could feel the adrenaline in my body because I get, why is that? It's making a dick. It's working. It's yeah. that working piece. That one person. We didn't care. We just would speak to one person and help them, make them feel more confident to go out in there and set up on your own or yeah. do something for yourself. Yeah. And Nessa has set up her own business. It's been going for five months, I believe. And she has now taken the leap. Mm -hmm. One of the things... Oh, my God, I've got so much to say. Yeah. Really quickly, I'm really sorry. So I found my initial document for Wildbird the other day on my phone in my yeah. Google Drive. And one of the things that inspired the name, which I can't believe I've fucking forgotten when we were talking about this the yeah. other day, is she took the leap and built her wings on the way down. <gasps> that is why Wildbird is called Wildbird. Oh, my God! Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it's baby brain, who knows? Mm. But back to Nessa. Nessa sent us a message. She... five months ago set up her business we will put her business in the show notes please give her a follow it is beautiful she was in a corporate environment and has recently left and is doing this full time mm -hmm. so what is it she said in the comments she said thank you so much i'm reaching out she's actually friends with leanne the midwife oh, who, amazing. Yeah, who we've spoken about on this episode and spoke about her business journey, said that she's really enjoyed listening to our mm -hmm. episodes, and if we ever wanted chit-chat, she would love that. And do we have any advice oh. to offer? It was in the evening, wasn't it? Mm. Tried to video call you, but I knew that you were busy, hung up immediately, and then just mm. sent you a message saying, you need to check the DMs on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and it just... I think my heart exploded. Yeah. How did it make you feel? I think it's super exciting. I've always said since we started this, what's our purpose? We have to be in line together with our purpose. And our purpose is to help other people that are f feeling how we have felt in the past. Yeah. And if we can just hold people's hand through different experiences in business that we have had and basically say, it's okay, you're going to feel like this, or this is what you're going to experience and that's perfectly normal. Let us just pick you up a little bit. Yeah, you know, lived. yeah, and if we can do that, then that's all I care about. And this is it. This and and then when concept. we got that message, I was like, oh my god, we were actually doing what our mission was, even yeah. that one person. Yeah, I feel. And exactly I think that's why we get the excitable feels, isn't it? Because we know that it's on purpose. It's what we want to achieve, and it is a creative outlet. And I think actually that's probably what I needed more than anything. Yeah. By doing this, everything is not serious because my business isn't that serious, but it's important. Yeah. And there's a lot to do, but to carve out like a couple of hours every other week to record some episodes and talk about really important, valuable stuff yeah. with someone I find so beautiful, yeah. like it's just all magical. And inspiring. Yeah. I didn't, what, no, you're inspiring? I've, no. <laughs> I, or you Even know. if you do say so yourself. <laughs> Hello, Moaning Myrtle is saying no, 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 but I find <clears> you inspiring <throat> and it's surrounding yourself with people that you look up to. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Frequency, baby. And it, that makes a huge difference. And that all sinks in with the universe. Like, level up your frequency. It's like crabs in a bucket, isn't it? If you're constantly with people that drag you down, or those people that go, no, you shouldn't do that. You can't do that. Why would you leave a job? Why would you do that? Those people don't want you to change. Because yeah. when you change, you will leave them. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily leave them permanently, yeah. but you will be different to them. Growth, yeah. And some people could love you dearly, but just don't want you to change. Yeah. And I think, yeah. We're here for evolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want I want to be cheering people on that are growing, evolving and being the best versions of themselves. So when they're on their deathbed and I say to them, <laughs> so 
Tell me. Tell me. Are you happy with what you've achieved? I want them to say, I have done everything I really fucking wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Or I need to come back again because I've got too many ideas. That's what I'll be saying. <laughs> yeah. I've got too many ideas. I need to come back again. There's live another this business. Life. The serial entrepreneurs on us will continue to live oh, on. Reincarnated. No. I'm excited as well. I get excited about future life. I'm like, I can do this in this life and then next life I'll have to do that, that, and that. Yeah. Yeah, because I really believe in all of that. <gasps> I didn't know Yeah, that. I really believe that energies come back in lives as well. So I believe... Oh, God, this is a whole different episode. There's a book called Many Lives, Many Masters, one of my favourite books ever. Yeah. Yeah. I won't tell you, I actually saw a therapist, a, a psychic, sorry, in Southampton. I was, well, I was living in Southampton, so I would have been like 24, 25. And she said to me, you're going to be the first one to have a child. And my sister was in a like long-term relationship. I was like, no, no, no. I thought my sister would be like, she'd be having the, the first kid. Yeah. And she went, and you're, you'll have the first one. And it'll be a daughter. And it's the spirit of your mother, just so you know. And I was like, pardon? Excuse me? I lost my mum when I was six. And she said, it's the spirit of your mother. It comes through your eldest daughter. And I can't explain it, but do you believe in stuff like that? And I said, I don't not believe it. I just don't know enough about it. Yeah. And she said, there's this book, Many Lives, Many Masters. She goes, read it and you'll understand exactly what I mean. And I read it. And then when Willow was born, she's been telling me off since the day she came out. <laughs> Yeah, and I do. I look at her and I'm like, you really are. She's such an old lady sometimes. Wow. Yeah, and it's funny, and, and the book is all about your like, energy and yeah. spirits live through. Yeah. So it could be that a dog that you absolutely adored in one life was like your brother in the next life, or there's like your enemy, yeah. or the person that's always challenged you the most, or been a really difficult, complex relationship will come through as a friend or as a partner or as a abuser or as a dad or whatever wow it's fascinating so i'm like next life because martin's a new soul i reckon do you think yeah i'm an old soul for sure i've been around loads of times but martin is a new soul but i was like there'll be something i'll come back and martin will be in my life for the next time but it'll be something else am i an old or new soul i don't know yeah i don't oh. know I don't know. I've not, not put any thought into it. But normally an old soul is someone that... I suppose you would be. Yeah, because you're wise, aren't you? I don't feel And wise. normally an old soul is someone that... You can tell has been around, like, a few times. That's the whole... That's where the saying comes from, isn't it? Been around a few times. Yeah, people because have it's... always said she's got an old head on her shoulders. Always. I can... Like, even from when I started. Yeah, because you're the younger sister. Yeah. But you're probably... Are you more responsible? Or, yeah, yeah do you parent up? If they're listening, no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then you probably are. Um, but I was also a mistake. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Never a mistake, look at No, you. no, no. My mum would, could, like, fiercely <laughs> contest that. But I was 100% a there we mistake. Go. So, wow. yeah, those old souls are the ones you tend to look up to and kind of go, oh, let me learn from you. Let me. Let, let me, me in. in. Let me learn from you. Come in, come in. So there we go on that note. The mother of all mothers. I know, right? What an epic podcast. Thanks for listening, team. Yeah. See you in episode six. Next yeah. one's six, isn't it? Next one is six. <laughs> Ta-ra! Thanks for listening. Don't forget to give us a cheeky follow, wild underscore moose. And if you've got anything that you want to hear from us, or if you've got any questions, please just ping us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe. Bye!